Hello everyone, welcome back. We're playing against Making Nonsense, No Sense. An anonymous player, I'm assuming, with no flag, who wants to enter the Nimso Indian. Well, be my guest. The Nimso F3 strikes again. Let's see. Anonymous, as expected. So. We're following the main moves so far. Bishop b3. Now queen b3 after castles is the most popular line, but king f2 is a move I like. And here I think rook b1 is the move. Rook d8. We're following the main line. And as far as I can tell, um, well, black has definitely some chances for equality, but from, let's say that from static point of view, white position is much better, because he has a pawn up and a pair of bishops in an open position. So black has to achieve a few things here. Either exploit uh, uh, his development uh, to try to, and the fact that white's king is in the center to get some dynamic play, or to capture the pawn and somehow maintain a solid position and play against my defected uh, pawn structure so yeah still taking this pawn isn't uh, the most easy of tasks he has to know several precise moves and uh, yeah, f5 is not considered to be the best but it's a good practical move I think especially in blitz because he's threatening fe if I take probably get some to play but I don't think I have too many options and now well I'm not sure what he wants if it was his move once again so let's just attack the bishop with a rook with the tempo see what he does now I have the development advantage I want to put my knight over here even this looks really bad for white to be honest eh, for black sorry He can get some pawns back, but knight g5 and uh, my development is going to be a bit uh, too much on, on his gentle soul. Making no sense. So in this particular game, so far, I agree. <laughs> so let's see, what do we have here? Knight c6? No, he wants knight e5. So, I can't say I have anything convincing against it. Let's just... Ah, knight g4 is a threat. I have to be careful. So, and also rook d8 might be an idea. Okay, so... What can I do? Maybe bishop d... Ah, but I have bishop d4 also next. Let's start with bishop d4. Just to ask him politely what his intentions are. Knight g4 is probably an interesting move. Uh, probably knight c6 as well. So the position is very complicated, but uh, it feels like uh, my my lead in development should be the decisive uh, cause for the evaluation. So here uh, I have different options, but the simplest one looks like to finish my artificial castle and uh, try to force my pos my opponent to make a decision. So he's still a pawn down, he's still lacking development. For the moment I have the two bishops. So I'm quite optimistic. Yeah, I take back, knight g5 is a big threat. It kind of prevents it. Uh, I have to admit I kind of missed this bishop f5 idea attacking my rook. But, uh, well, I have rook b7 there. No, I don't. That's a shame. So, maybe I start with rook b5 right now. Ah, I have a check with the queen. Okay, so first I take and then think. It's a good strategy in such complicated positions when I don't have much choice. And now he wants to take here next. At least that's what I think. So it's, it might be a good idea to give a check. 
for example from here actually also queen d5 bishop takes g7 looks almost tempting wow the position is very complex okay let me think one sec queen d5 king g8 then it will be seven is 95 as well so i want to take will be seven and then might be a bit too much start with bishop g7 there is a difference looks very tempting i have to try I really feel like trying it. Then rook b7. Uh -huh. Might not work. It's not easy. Queen d5, rook b7. Straight away. Takes takes. Okay, might be completely lost for me, yeah. but I really want to try. I don't see your refutation. So, he has several options, but uh, the most logical one being king h8. Okay, only two options, that makes sense, yeah. Now, bishop g7, I can't find a convincing way to proceed, but here, this intermediate move attacks the knight and attacks g7, so it kind of forces knight e5, and then I play queen e5, threatening mate. And he has to respond to this threat, and only after he does, I get g takes h3. And despite the, the weak pawns, I'm gonna be three pawns up. And the c5 pawn is really advanced, so it might decide the game. If uh, I'm not playing too badly. Okay, so. Rook f6. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna take. Yeah, he can take some pawns back, but it feels like my position should be close to either close to winning or much better. But yeah, I still have to be precise. So, for example, rook c8 looks good for him, and then I really want to find a way to put pressure. Maybe rook g1 here. Yeah. Rook g1 looks good. c5 takes takes okay now it doesn't have a threat actually so what if rook g1 i'm not really sure what he wants let's find out i think uh, this move rook f6 rook f8 was was not precise rook f6 now looks correct but then rook to g7 so yeah might have been a, a decisive mistake who knows still no real threats and go with the rook here and then hide with the king on g3 for example should be made it yeah. quickly okay queen f7 rook g6 check actually rook a f7 <laughs> rook bf7 is good enough um rook f7 rook g6 Also, rook g5, rook g4. Black resigns. Yeah, resigns. Okay, interesting game. Uh, as I like to say, the first mistake was to enter this position. Although, of course, objectively, it's not really bad for black just yet. But the uh, computer really likes uh, black situation in this uh, structure. Yeah, and let's look at what happens here. So far we're following the main lines and f5 isn't really the most principled, uh, let's say the most precise move. Might be principled, principled but not, not really convincing as far as I can tell. Okay, now queen e2, just developing the rook next, probably is the best. Yeah. But still, oh knight g5 was winning. Okay, let's turn it off and see what happens. Oh, queen c4 check, oh come on, this is... This is easy. Rook takes b7. Okay. Let's try to analyze properly. Okay, so here. Knight g5. He goes bishop f5. 
I'm taking, yeah. I'm checking this move. Look, takes b7 looks logical. It takes b4 and then check. Yeah. Queen f7 and I'm completely winning. Yeah, that's quite easy to calculate. I don't know how, how I missed it. Uh, that's a pity. Okay, so let's look at the game. He took queen c5 now gives him counterplay uh, in an end game after we exchange everything this was a mistake yeah. and now actually bishop g7 was winning yeah. so let's turn it off again and try to come up with the winning yeah. sequence so here queen h5 looks oh no there's bishop f5 so here there is a win as far as i can tell but what is it I really don't know. Okay. What could it be? Just to take the bishop now and the attack is uh, too strong? Maybe. No. So, I want to really think about it for a moment. Let's see. If I go rook e to e7, he takes. Queen e5, queen e7. Looks good. Doesn't have any good checks and a threatening mate. Yeah, this should be it. Rook e7. It's an easy move to miss. Takes queen e5, queen e7. And black has to give up his queen. Yeah. Okay, that's quite interesting. I can't expect. M this is a move that I might even miss in over the board chest, not only in blitz. But it's quite, quite impressive, I mean, to have so many interesting tactics. Yeah, I, w I do expect myself to see it in Blitz, uh, but uh, of course I can't complain having missed it. Uh, yeah, Rook B7 is good for an edge, and practically it's very difficult to defend. I think Rook C8 has to be played. Um, yeah, C6 is what I kind of wanted to play, and now just to play this position, which of course would be close to winning, but white Black has some drawing chances, in practically speaking. Two rooks, there's a chance for counter play. Um, yeah, and then he just blundered, not rook g1, and completely winning. So it was an interesting game. I really enjoyed uh, playing another, uh, having another adventure with the f3 Nimso. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and that uh, at least it inspires you to uh, look at this line a little bit if you have a chance to play it. Uh, with white or look at it deeper if you haven't respected it enough with black and uh, yeah as always i hope you learned something from this game and enjoyed watching it and uh, if you want to learn some more then uh, keep watching the next videos